Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem two from hacker rank 101 hack 54 entitled bus stops. The problem states there are n bus stops on the street. You can imagine the street as a line with the coordinate system. The coordinates of the bus stops are x1 to xn, where xi is the distance in meters from the ith bus to the beginning of the street. The first bus stop is located at the beginning of the street, and the last is located at the end of the street. There is exactly one bus route. A bus goes from the beginning to the end of the street every w minutes with speed v meters per minute, starting at time zero. A bus stops at each stop. Stopping takes no time. There are people who want to reach the end of the street. The ith person starts at point pi and at time ti and has a walking speed of ui meters per minute. For each person, you should find the minimum time when this person can reach the end of the street. So let's take a look at the example that HackerRank gave us. So this is the input that we are given, and HackerRank was kind enough to provide a visualization of this input. So the first number of four represents the number of bus stops, and the next four numbers represent uh, the locations of those bus stops. Note that the first one is zero, and the last one is the last bus stop, 100. Uh, the next two numbers are W and V. So W is the wait time in between buses, meaning every 20 minutes a bus will leave from position zero, and 10 is the speed of the bus. Uh, three is for the number of individuals that want to get on the bus and travel to the end of the street. And then each of these individuals has three numbers. So the first one is the starting position. Uh, so you can see here the first individual starts at zero, the second at 15, and the third at 40. Uh, the second number is the time at which they start. Uh, so individual, uh, the first individual will start right away, but uh, the second individual will start at time 10. And the last number for each of these individuals is the speed at which they can walk. Uh, so this is a pretty straightforward problem um, in, in order to like understand how to solve it, but the implementation is pretty tricky. Um, but basically the solution itself is not too difficult. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, use a binary search uh, upper bound. If you're not familiar, uh, check out this video here on how upper bound works uh, to find the bus stop that is uh, after each individual. And then using uh, iterators, we can then also get the bus stop that is before. Uh, so for uh, each of these individuals, we will look at two bus stops, and then we just need to calculate uh, going to that bus stop how much it how much time it would take to get to the end of the street. Uh, so there's three things that we need to calculate in order to calculate that time. So the first one is the time to walk to the bus. Uh, so for the first individual, if we're looking at bus stop one, that's just going to be zero. But we can calculate this by just looking at the absolute difference of the starting position of the individual uh, and the bus stop that uh, it, uh, the individual is going to and then dividing that by the speed s at which the individual can walk. Uh, the second thing we need to calculate is the trickiest of the three. This is the time uh, waiting for the bus at that bus stop. So we'll, we'll look at this a bit closer when we look at the code, but basically what we just need to calculate is which bus number are we going to be able to catch. So are we going to be able to catch the first bus, the second bus, or the third bus? Uh, and then we times that by the waiting time and uh, and then we add to it the bus arrival offset, which is just means that if you're uh, getting to bus stop three, you're gonna have to add uh, the four seconds that it takes for the bus that starts, the third bus that starts at uh, position zero to get to bus stop number three. And then the third thing we need to calculate is the time spent on the bus. And this one's pretty straightforward as well. We just take uh, the position of the last stop, which will be 100, uh, subtract from it the position of the bus stop, and then divide that by the speed of the the bus which is V uh, and so like I said before uh, if we were looking at the second individual uh, we could look at bus stop number two and bus stop number three because he starts at uh, position 15 so first we'll do our our call to upper bound which will retrieve us bus stop number three uh, and then we'll pass in uh, all the information we need to calculate this number then we're going to do the same thing passing in uh, this uh, slightly different information but just to bus stop number two and then at the very end 
end, once we've calculated this and this, uh, we also need to calculate the time it would take for the individual just to walk to the bus stop, which for the third individual ends up being uh, the optimal case. So once we have those three numbers uh, for the two bus stops and then just walking to the final, uh, to the end of the street, we just take the minimum of those three and return it for each individual. So let's take a look at our code. So here is our code. We have two functions, uh, solve our main function below, and time to end, which will calculate the time for each individual uh, to get to the end of the street. So we'll start with solve. This takes four parameters, a vector of long doubles. We're just using a type alias uh, LD to mean long doubles. We'll call that stops. And then three uh, long doubles. Uh, w is the waiting time. V is the speed of the bus. And Q is the number of queries or individuals that we need to uh, output the time to end for. So we're just going to loop through for each individuals, read in the starting position, the time at which uh, they show up, and the speed that they can walk, and then we set our answer uh, initially to the maximum uh, that a long double can be, and then we do our upper bound call, our binary search, on the position uh, that is given for each individual. Uh, and then we check to see as long as there's a bus stop uh, to the right of this individual, we're going to make a call to time to end and pass in the value of that bus stop. Uh, then we'll make another call to time to end if there's a bus stop to the left. And note, we'll just do that by uh, using the prev function on our iterator from the upper bound call. And then our third calculation is going to be the time uh, to walk to the end of the street without taking the bus. So three different numbers we're calculating, and each time we're setting the answer to be the minimum of the current uh, value and the new calculated uh, time to end. So going up to our time to end function, uh, we've broken this down into each of the components. Uh, so the first component is uh, the time to walk to the stop. The third component is the time uh, on the bus so these are the simplest just as we stated in our visual example and then uh, the four values in the middle are used for uh, calculating um, how much time there's going to be spent waiting at the bus stop so uh, this temporary variable is the time at which we arrive at the bus stop then we calculate to the bus arrival offset so the stop number divided by the speed so that is how long it takes the bus bus to get uh, to the stop that it, we're currently looking at and uh, then we can get the bus number by using the seal function and this uh, time to arrive at the stop uh, and subtracting the uh, bus arrival offset and then just dividing that by the waiting time. And then so once we have this round number, we then multiply it uh, by the waiting time and then add back uh, the bus arrival offset, which we subtracted earlier here. And uh, once we have this, uh, this is the time that we will be getting on the bus. So walk time uh, plus the time waiting equals the time to get on the bus. So we basically combined our first two uh, components that we talked about earlier. Uh, and then we, once we have these two values, we just uh, return them. Uh, and note that this whole function can be uh, simplified, and this is what's shown in the HackerRank editorials to something that's a lot more concise, uh, but I think that this is a, a lot more readable uh, for those who are trying to understand how to solve the problem. And so using these two functions, you'll be able to solve the problem. Now note that I actually, uh, when using this code, did not get a full successful submission. There was five test cases that failed, but uh, it seems to be that this is just uh, an online judge problem because they require you to be within 10 to the negative five, but using this code, uh, you will get some uh, rounding differences uh, that are only accurate to within two decimal places, not five. Um, but it seems like uh, this actually might be a problem with the uh, testing code uh, because when comparing them, it looks like the, the code that's actually been rounded is uh, the solution that's provided if you look at the input and expected output. Um, but I'll have an update in the next uh, Sunday episode to see if I've heard back from the hacker rank folks. And the last thing to talk about is the time complexity of this formula. And because we're doing K queries with uh, log N search, the time complexity will be uh, big O of Q log N. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.